I will call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Um, I want to uh, make one change um, when we go to number two, approval of the agenda. We have to add something. Um, as the board is aware, um, we received, or I received and shared with the board, a letter of resignation from our district clerk. Um, and so we need to accept that resignation and we need to appoint a replacement um, in light of the fact that we need that done to sign our warning um, for our annual meeting. So is that change to the agenda good with everybody? Excellent. Does anyone else have any changes to the agenda or additions? Okay, hearing none, um, we need a motion to approve the minutes from our December 16th meeting. Someone, thank you, BJ. Adrian will second, thank you. Um, any discussion, any corrections that need to be made to those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the December 16th meeting, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Anyone abstaining? Please say so. Okay. Um, it's public input and announcements. So um, I know that we have uh, Crystal Usher is here, wants to speak to us. Um, just before I let you speak, um, Crystal, just one thing, I'd just like to make an announcement just to clarify something that um, had come up is that for public, and this has nothing to do with you, Crystal, don't, but just for public um, input, purposes, um, I just want to remind the public in general that um, we are not, our policy with regard to public participation does not allow us to hear any complaints against any specific um, employees of the district because that would be a violation of privacy issues. So uh, there is a process in place. If anyone had a complaint against anyone um, that works for the district to follow, and that is our policy, um, which is D10 and can be found on the website. Um, and those complaints need to be submitted in writing. So um, I just wanted to preface that because that was an issue that did come up earlier today. Um, and I just wanted to make that announcement publicly. So Crystal, hi, how are you? Happy New Year. Good evening, happy New Year to you all. Um, I'm Crystal Usher, parent of three children at Mill River and a Clarendon taxpayer. And I just wanted to share, uh, speak again tonight and share my concerns with the declining enrollment in our district, um, including athletics. I am sure um, all agree the steady decline in enrollment at Mill River is concerning and within our district. I would be interested in seeing the number of families who have elected to transfer out of district, a number of which are paying out of pocket tuition costs or have opted to homeschool just this school year. I challenge the reason for the de decline being a lack of housing within our dis district, as was suggested at a recent board meeting, specifically in regards to children enrolled in special services. Each board meeting, we are hearing from principals about the positive changes and how nicely the kids have adapted to new routines over the past year. I agree, kids are happy to be back in the classroom and I am sure they've returned, smiling and easily adapted to new classroom and bus routines, lunch habits and more. However, I believe it's time to focus on improvement, specifically school day structure, education, and sports. Uh, Mr. Yount suggested we have limited capacity in our school building to provide more in-person learning. So I'm assuming that we have already reached out to schools across the state and country with the same issue to consider alternative ways to provide a more consistent learning structure during this time. On another note, our athletic programs are failing, specifically seeing a drop in enrollment as well. Prior to COVID, we struggled to form varsity teams, in many cases pulling up eighth grade athletes and unable to form, form some of the JV teams that we have had historically. Again, I'll assume our athletic director is working to form a plan to recruit coaches and players. It's more important now than ever to engage and motivate children to participate in our school sports at some level. I would like to see neighboring towns moving towards our school, not away from it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Crystal. Okay, Dave, is there anyone else? No? Okay, all right. We will then move on to item five, which is our annual meeting and election process uh, discussion. 
So, um, Dave, do you want to give us a summary of where we stand? I know she. Yeah, can thank you, Jamie. I'll give you give you a summary. Uh, so, first to the board members, I shared a, a document with you, which was a proposal I wanted to ask you to consider. It was a little bit unique. It involved um, an outdoor February meeting, socially distanced and chilly, and I want to encourage you to put that proposal on ice. Pun totally intended. With that, uh, you're welcome. George is not here, so somebody had to do it. Um, Essentially, I want to give you an update on where things are with the concept around annual meetings and town meetings statewide. We are, we've are we become aware that there's some legislation that's probably going to move pretty quickly through the through the House and the, the Senate in the next couple of weeks that is going to give municipalities, and that would mean towns as well as school districts, some flexibility in how they deal with their annual meetings and their town meetings. Specific flexibility would be in the, in the realm of uh, granting the freedom to move town meeting dates and granting the freedom to um, engage in mail-in balloting if towns or municipalities chose to do so. That creates some interesting dilemmas when you think about what that means for us as a school district. So we have four different towns that we serve. And if each of our towns were to approach that differently, that becomes chaos. You know, So what do you do if one town is doing uh, remote this and another per town is doing in person that one town is doing voting on town meeting day another town moves it to June because they're thinking they might be able to gather people together you know there there's just a lot of different things that could make that more complex but th some of the things that have sugared off as this concept has has been working its way through are essentially that we've confirmed that for our annual meeting if we were to have a remote meeting we cannot take any action at that meeting. So voting for a moderator, a clerk, a treasurer, those would not be options if we had a remote meeting. We have confirmed that. I've had conversations with the town clerks in Wallingford and Tinmouth to get a sense on where those select boards are in terms of how they're approaching things. Tinmouth, if you think about it, is probably our best measuring stick in terms of how a town that does a traditional in-person uh, town meeting with a lot of voting from the floor, how that would be navigated. Gail Fowler up in Timoth has shared with me that the select board up there has decided that they are going to do a remote informational meeting when they normally do their, their in-person meeting, and they're going to be holding their voting as they normally do. Got the same information from Wallingford today when I spoke to Julie Sharon at the, uh, in the clerk's office in Wallingford, have not been able connect, to connect with Gloria and Clarendon or Mark in Shrewsbury on that topic yet. My suggestion to the board right now, based on what we know, is uh, later in the meeting, we're going to suggest that we schedule a special meeting for next Wednesday for the purpose of approving our warning and ballot structure. That will give a little bit of time to see what happens at the, at the legislative level and to see what's emerging there. I actually have to testify in the House tomorrow on this specific topic and on this specific bill. So I'll hear a little bit of, of the conversation for what's happening um, in that, that particular committee. But I'd recommend we have a special meeting next week. I'd also strongly recommend that we prepare for an approach where we have the board take action to move all of our voting items to Australian ballot. So put the treasurer, moderator, and clerk on the Australian ballot with our normal budget uh, pieces, that we do an, a remote informational meeting during our annual meeting time slot on February 25th and that we prepare our normal paper ballots for distribution to the towns to be voted upon in the towns as they normally are. We are allowed to use the school buildings for election purposes, which means that we can gather our ballots from the towns and we can bring them together at Mill River and co-mingle them as is called for by our bylaws and have a socially distanced safe ballot counting process led by whoever is our district clerk at that point in time. So. My essential recommendation is going to be that we kind of continue as we normally do with the exception that our annual meeting would be remote and we wouldn't take the action of electing a moderator, clerk, and treasurer at that meeting. Final piece, I currently have a template of, of the documentation that can be used to distribute to the public to allow people to express their interest in any of those positions. So what that would look like is we'd, we'd prep the document, we'd issue it through our own means, we'd also ask the towns to make it available, you know, through clerk's offices, but we do front porch forum, et cetera. Have a deadline that, that allowed for us to get any names that had interest, get them on our ballot in time for our ballots to be produced and distributed where they need to go. And things should be pretty tidy um, if that were the case.
the only other piece I would share with you on this at this point in time, if for some reason we decided that rather than um, have our ballot be you know, voted on on town meeting day with all the towns and we wanted to do a mail-in activity, that is something we could pursue. Of course, there's a lot of new complexity that goes with that. And there would be lots of costs that would go with that. My understanding is the legislation being discussed uh, accounts for some reimbursement using federal funds to deal with those costs, but we don't know enough about any of the details of what that might look like for now. So my ultimate recommendation is proceed as I just described, but that we sit tight for now, take some action next week to deal with our Australian ballot concept and our warning and our ballot, and then we should be in good shape. But I would gladly entertain any, any dialogue or questions to help me kind of further the research and, and planning to sort of uh, flesh this out. I know Adrian had a question and then John, go ahead, or comment. Okay. Um, I actually had two, two questions. One, um, on, on a regular basis, the towns all send counters to Mill River. And I know that might not be right on your radar screen, but I thought we should mention that we still either need those people or you need to solicit somebody else because we aren't having the regular town counting sessions. Got it. That makes sense, Adrian. Yeah, thank you very much. And can I just ask Adrian, thing... Adrian, can I ask just uh, as a matter sure. of protocol, the, the folks who have done the voting from the towns, have they tended to be affiliated with the district in any direct way or is it kind of variable by town? Um, Do you have any idea? In, I don't know for the other towns. In, in Shrewsbury, it used to be the same two guys okay. for, for years. And one of them was the wife of, you know, I mean, the, or the husband of a, a town clerk. And, you know, it was it was complicated. But I don't believe last year it was, it, it was still, there were two guys that probably would do it again this year, but we just have to make sure that they were contacted. Got it. Thank you. Um, and the other question I had was when you're saying mail-in ballot just for us, is there any advantage to that? If I mean, the towns will mail out our ballot to people that want to do mail-in balloting and they'll collect our ballots for us regardless why would yes. we why would we want to do that? I can't say that we would want to do that or that okay. there would be any sort of advantage. Just like, I just wanted wow. to address that uh, as a municipality, that would be an option we could pursue if we wanted to go down that road and and have our hands entirely on that process. But again, it gets I complex. Go on that. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That's my only comment. <laughs> John. Uh, my only question is about the folks who express interest in being on the ballot for treasurer, clerk, moderator, et cetera. For us to be on a ballot, we have to sign a piece of paper with the town clerk. Are those folks going to have to do the same thing since this is an Australian ballot? And if so, that needs to be done, I think, by the 25th of January, if I remember the date correctly. Are we going to um, be able John, to accommodate that? dependent on each town, I okay. think. Uh, I think there's some statute, state statutory language that's oh, if it's for, for six ours, weeks well, prior I, to the election day. Yeah, I, 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 I understand that. Statute. I just know our town clerk is, is doing it at a different time, which makes okay. no sense, but nonetheless. <laughs> but there will be a deadline of some form for doing that. It's something we might want to make sure we're taking into account. Yes, and so John, in the uh, in the interim between now and next week, when we potentially take this action, I'll be refining all of those details so that we'd be ready to rock and know when a deadline would be, so that we could distribute something immediately if we go down that road. We'll, we'll have it regardless, but be ready to go. Yeah, the Secretary of State's website does have that form on it. It's a PDF. It is a fillable form. Um, I did that myself for getting my name on the ballot for this election but I haven't heard back from the clerk as to whether that was acceptable or not. They were uh, closed for all of last week and I sent it in last week. So I didn't forget, but I haven't heard back whether it was or was not acceptable in that form. So it's just something, something to keep in mind with all that. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Comments, input, suggestions. Are we good with, that um, plan of action to uh, to have Dave prepare the template for of interest from anyone and then to move at our, so we would do that at our 
the thirteenth meeting then, right? To make that motion. Yeah, if we decide to have a special meeting, I would prep a, a motion for you on um, moving all the articles to Australian, and then we obviously would need to approve our warning and approve our our ballot based on that decision that would happen right before. Okay, so, uh, everyone, good with that by consensus. Give me a thumbs up. Okay, all right, Tammy. Yes, I previously shared this with you, but I'm not available on the 13th. You are correct. You did share that with us. Um, I don't know if others have expressed that they're available or not available, but obviously, you know, we want to ensure that it's going to be a yeah, so, forum. And just for the record, next week is, a, is one of the weeks where we don't have any committee meetings or board meetings. So in terms of the board schedule, uh, those evenings are open, but I obviously can't speak for your personal schedules. Don't want to try to do that. I think we have, Maria, do we have a community engagement meeting on the 12th? We do. Okay. So I don't know if, um, well, we'll have this dis the discussion about that the 13th and when we're meeting next week for a special meeting, if we're meeting for a special meeting when we do agenda building. So we'll revisit that. In the meantime, everyone kind of think on availability and dates. Um, so that is something we need to get done. Okay. Um, so then we'll move on and we have, um, you have everything you need from us then, right, Dave? On that? I do, thank you, yep. Okay, so we have um, to do our tuition rate approval and our in and out numbers, right? Our statutory numbers. So Stan, that all speaks of you, welcome. <laughs> Good evening. Um, yes, um, I'm asking the board to set the tuition rate for FY22. Uh, for the um, elementary school, the uh, recommended tuition rate is 16750 which is a 2.76% increase over this current year's tuition. And the high school to set the rate at 16600 which is a 7.1% increase over the current year's tuition rate. So I would ask uh, someone to make a motion to accept those uh, tuition rates for FY22. Okay, Adrian, can you make a motion? Is there a second? And Liz will second it. Is there any discussion on that? Any questions for Stan? Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving the tuition rates uh, as presented, please say aye or give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. And anyone abstaining? Okay. Tammy, I'll take the public school choice uh, limits one, if you don't mind. Okay. We are. I shared a document with the board previously that gives the context and the background and the numbers behind us meeting 16 VSA 822A, which is the public high school choice statute. Uh, the motion requested would be to approve Mill River Union High School's public high school choice limits of 40 students in and 24 students out for the 2021-2022 school year. Just for the record, these are the same in and out limits as we have um, maintained across the past five or six years. So just looking for that motion, please. Okay, we'll make that motion. Okay, wow, everybody. And take your choice. <laughs> and and one of them can also second. How's that? <laughs> so John, Liz, or BJ, you have your choice. Um, anyone have any discussion on that? Questions, comments? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of approving our um, public high school choice numbers um, as presented, give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. And anyone abstaining? Okay. There you have it. And then we will move on to our budget approval. So Liz. Hi everybody. Okay, so I am going to do a quick overview of the fiscal year 22 proposed budget for approval. Um, the board uh, will take action on two items and then I wish to make a final note. Um, so the overall fiscal year 22 expenditure budget is eighteen million eight hundred and ninety six dollars? I'm sorry, eighteen million eight hundred and ninety six 
$395, which is up $32,854 or 0.17% over last year, which is less than a quarter of a percent. The preliminary number for equalized pupils is 779.07 which is higher by 6.34 or 0.82%. Our education spending grant is at $13,688,744, which is down by $1,359 or 0.01%. The education spending grant per pupil is $17,000 $570.62, which is down by $145.92, or 0.82%. This is a very sound and responsible level budget, and I wish to thank all of the board members involved in this process, our business manager, Stan Polasic, our superintendent, Dave Younce, and everyone else involved in this process for a very good job, well done. So with that being said, I would like to make a motion that the board approve the fiscal year 22 budget as presented. Is there a second to that motion? Adrian, thank you. Um, and discussion, any comments, questions? I just wanna thank the members of the, uh, the committee there because I'm not one of them anymore, but I know to get to where you guys did was a lot of work, so. Kudos to everybody involved. I echo that. Yes, a lot of work went into it, and we thank everybody for that. Anyone else? Okay. So then all those in favor of approving the um, FY22 budget as presented, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. And anyone abstaining? And just for purposes of the record, um, I note that two of our board members who I knew were not going to be here tonight, Amy Martone and um, Doug Earl, had asked me to um, state publicly on their behalf that they were in favor of the budget and fully supported it. So I just wanted to put that out there on the record for them. Um, so then we will move on. And Adrian, it would be uh, you, the next. Um, Actually, item. I have another item for Sorry. board action. Oh. Yes, and I forgot. I'm sorry, Liz. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so the second motion I would like to make is that uh, we move, well, I'd like to make the motion that a ballot item be added to appropriate $200,000 uh, for the capital sinking fund. Is there a second to that? John, thank you. Discussion? John. Is that um, from an unanticipated surplus or is that just an item to put it in by itself? It's surplus money, right, Stan? And Dave is nodding his head, yeah. yeah. Unanticipated surplus, yeah. So that would need to be the motion. Yes. For that ballot. Okay, so should I, should I just restate it? Yeah. Amend it, yeah. Okay, so I would, move that a ballot item be added to appropriate $200,000 of unanticipated surplus monies for the capital sinking fund. And you'll second that amended motion, John. Thank you. Hey, okay, any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor of, of, of that motion, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Anyone abstaining? Okay. And you have one comment now, right, Liz? Yes, thank okay. you so much. So um, I just wanted to share a final note with the public that the public should note that CLA, that's common level of appraisal numbers, came in lower than prior years for all town except Tinmouth. A lower CLA, the excuse me, a lower CLA number means a higher tax rate, and this is something over which we the board have no control. And so I wanted to share with our community um, participants this evening that the Vermont School Board Association supports an examination of the CLA and urges you 
to contact the governor and the General Assembly and ask that they evaluate its mechanics and impacts on small towns. And the last thing I wanted to share with the community, and I will um, bring I will bring this with me to our uh, engagement um, coffee community event on Saturday, that um, there is a uh, fairer and simpler way to fund public education. And, um, and I will give you a link to the public assets policy proposal for the board minutes. And it's something that the public may wish to share with their legislators um, for legislative action. And that's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Liz. Okay, now, Adrian, do you want to discuss the support staff? Sure. <laughs> um, well, you've all had a chance to, to look the support staff over. There's some um, changes to language um, almost entirely to bring the support staff and the teachers contract language into, um, you know, so that they're the same, so that we're not trying to, to deal with two different contracts when when there's not really any reason for the articles to be different. In a few cases, it, it um, enhanced the, the support staff's um, benefit package, which is great and, and um, something that they deserve. The contract raises settled, we did a two-year contract and it was a 2.75 increase for this year and a 2.25 increase for next year. And um, the board side also agreed to have the custodial pay rate start at $15 to enhance our hiring capacity in that role. Um, that's most of the differences. Um, I welcome any questions that anybody has or, or a motion to um, approve the contract. John. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the contract and then I also have a comment. Okay, is there a second to the motion? Thank you, Liz. Um, and then do you wanna have your comment now, John? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I just wanna say that um, this negotiation was very pleasant and um, very amicable. Um, I think the $15 an hour for custodians is gonna be very important for our operations folks to be able to hire people. The, one of the biggest things we hear is that, uh, one of the biggest barriers to being able to hire people is that we just weren't paying enough. Um, I know where I work, we've, we're have we starting people off at $15 an hour to pick and pack and uh, whatever else. And, um, you know, $15 an hour is going to go a long way for us to be able to fill those positions that we've had a real challenge filling. So I really, and, and the support staff were really, really supportive of that. And I appreciate that from them as well. They recognize that that's a need that we have and they were very supportive of it. Um, and um, that's about it. It was a, I think it was a very fair um, contract for both sides. Dave. Yeah, just to echo uh, what John shared first, the, the board should know that support staff members ratified the agreement on Monday. So if you ratify it this evening, we will have a fully executed agreement and I'm, I'll be excited to get that rolling and um, taken care of. And that triggers some timelines, you know, in our business office, we have some work to do then to, um, to respond to new numbers. But I do want to give my commendation to our board negotiation team and the support staff negotiation team. You know, this was a a negotiation that was ready to get some traction before COVID hit and then COVID hit and everything got quiet for a good period of time. So once we got things rolling again, good work was done. People were collegial, collaborative. It was just a really impressive group on both sides to work with. And, uh, you know, in my role, which is kind of a middleman through the entire process, it was, it was easy and pleasant to get good work done. And thanks. Thanks for considering this agreement tonight. Okay. So we have any other comments or questions? Okay, so we have a motion and a second. So all those in favor of approving the support staff agreement as presented, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, there you are. Thanks everybody. Okay. Um, next we have substitute rates of pay. So Dave. You're muted. 
<laughs> I have to unmute myself and get to a different document. So um, effective January 1st, the minimum wage increased slightly and that took our substitute support staff daily rate and it was slightly too low. So we need to make an adjustment to account for the minimum wage increase. So current sub pay rates uh, have been support staff $85 per day and teachers $100 per day. That's for a seven and a half hour workday, just so that you're aware. Recommendation is that we increase support staff to $90 per day. Uh, that gets us into a reasonable range in terms of the new minimum wage. And just to have a comparable increase, recommend increasing the teacher rate from $100 to $105 per day. So I would like to request a motion that we that the board approve support staff 90 teachers 105 per day. Okay, BJ will make that motion. Thank you. John will second it. Is there any discussion? John. Uh, if I remember correctly, some of the contract language uh, for certain things is based on the sub pay. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, some of it was based on like a half, 50% or, you know, kind of established percentages, which is good, good language to have developed because that allows the room to, to move with any adjustments that we make. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I clarified that. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Adrian? Um, I just wanted to know if, if those pay rates, if Dave thought those were adequate. I know everybody's scrambling for subs. Are we holding our own in that area? Yeah, we are slightly above average on the sub pay rates, I would say, um, except for in this exact instance right now, Slate Valley to our west, when they are in person this week and so many other districts went remote for this week, Slate Valley temporarily raised their sub rates by like 30%. To attract folks, you know, during this this unique time, but I believe they intend to return back to their norm, which is in about the same ballpark as ours after uh, after this remote week. Thanks, Hi. Liz. I just want to make a comment that the word on the street is that people want to substitute teach in our district. Cool. Which is very cool. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks it's it's really it's it's a credit to our students. It's a credit to our administrators, and frankly, it's just a credit to the whole institution, so. Thank you. Okay, um, no other discussion. So all those in favor of approving the sub pay rates of $90 for support staff and 105 for teachers, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, and in here we're gonna sneak in or put in our uh, district clerk resignation. So um, as I mentioned, our district clerk, uh, Nicole Peterson, submitted a letter of resignation, um, uh, effective immediately due to um, some personal issues with her family. She's a new mom, again, um, being one of them, or the main one. Um, so we um, need to accept that resignation formally. So will someone make that motion? John, thank you. And Adrian, a second, thank you. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor of accepting Nicole's resignation as district clerk, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Anyone abstaining? Okay, so we will formally have accepted that resignation. And um, Nicole, thank you so much. If you're watching or you see this, we appreciate all the work that you've done for us over the years. And um, we wish you well in all the other things that you are now still undertaking. <laughs> um, and then, um, Dave, do you want to fill us in on um, our uh, appointee or potential appointee? Sure. So, yeah, with that resignation, obviously, this is the time of year that um, we require a clerk's signature on some things, and they're involved in voting, et cetera. So on Monday morning, I reached out to Clarendon resident Heather Kent, who board members are familiar with. She's in, engaged in some uh, meeting, I'm sorry, meeting minute taking for us. She also used to do some work at the Clarendon clerk's office, so Heather kind of knows the lay of the land. Heather did agree to serve as our replacement clerk for the duration of this term, which, which gets us up to the annual meeting when we would conceivably uh, elect another clerk, possibly via Australian ballot. We'll see. So um, I would request, if the, the board is willing, that we have a motion to appoint Heather Kent as our district clerk for the remainder of the term. And Liz is making that motion. Adrian seconding it. Thank you. Any discussion on that? John. Um, I just want to say that um, I've worked with Heather quite a bit, not only with um, 
her taking minutes, but she was the um, administrative assistant for the select board for quite a number of years. Um, she's got kids in the schools. Um, she's a great person, really knows her stuff. So I strongly support her uh, in this role. Excellent. Thank you. Adrian. Um, I, I second that. Not I don't have quite as much experience, but she's always seemed very helpful and, and very smart and, and great. Um, is she she's willing to, to run our election? Yes. When I explained what it what it involved, uh, the answer to that was yes. Um, if your next okay. question is, would she be interested in submitting her name for clerk for the next year? I don't know the answer to that quite yet. So oh no, I wasn't going to ask that. That that's that. I wouldn't have put that in a public meeting. But thank you. I mean, <laughs> um, but no, I just wanted to make sure she understood that there wasn't going to be another clerk appointed at that annual meeting. She was actually the clerk through through the the um, Australian ballot election. That's correct. You got it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. All those in favor of um, appointing Heather Kent as the um, district clerk to fill the um, remaining time on Nicole's term, please give me a thumbs up. And anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay. Well, we appreciate Heather and um, welcome her to that role and thank her for stepping up. Um, and then now we will move on to committee business. So first would be personnel. Len. Hi there, everybody. Um, we got a lot, I got a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, it may take a little while, but I'll try to move it along. Um, basically, we did meet tonight and we have several um, contracts that need to be approved by the board. Um, I'll start with a contract for Carrie Becker. A one year, I'll make a motion to offer Carrie Becker a one year contract. She's the after school coordinator, um, and that is funded through uh, a grant. So I'd make that motion. And Liz is seconding it. Thank you. Um, any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the one year contract for Carrie Becker, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone um, opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? So congratulations to Carrie, and we look forward to um, having her continue her good work in her after school program. Uh, secondly, um, a two-year contract for Andrew Jones Curriculum Coordinator, I believe is his title, David, is that correct? <laughs> um, for two, and I make a motion to offer him a two-year contract in that position. Just director of curriculum, Len. Sorry about that. Okay. Director of curriculum. <laughs> hey, and I'm sorry, I looked away. So BJ, yes, thank you for seconding. Um, I have to be quicker, quicker. Um, I have to write it down. So all those, um, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of a, uh, approving a two-year contract for Andrew Jones in his current role as director of curriculum, curriculum director, now I'm all confused. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone opposed? Um, any extensions? Okay. And congratulations to Andrew. We look forward to his continued good work. Adrian. Um, I just wanted to say we're offering all these two-year contracts and Carrie was a one-year because of grant constraints, correct, Len? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to say that. We thank yeah. you. That's <laughs> no, thank you for that um, clarification. Okay. Go ahead, Len. Um, and I guess curriculum coordinator is outdated. Um, next one is Kim Maneri, a two-year contract. And I'm going to be careful here. Activities director or athletic director. Uh, a two-year contract for Kim and I would make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? Thank you, BJ. Um, any discussion? Okay. All those in, approving the, uh, in favor of approving the two-year contract for Kim Maneri in her current role, please give me a thumbs up. Okay. Um, yes, it's the 2021-21-22. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, clarifying question for man <laughs> for notes. Um, anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and we congratulate um, Kim in continuing her work in that role. Um, next, we have Gary Marcy, a one-year contract. Um, buildings and grounds operations. Um, and that 
one year contract is Gary's choice. Um, so I would make a motion for a one year contract for Gary. Okay, and Adrian, I'll second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? And seeing none, all those in favor of approving the one year contract for Gary Marcy in his current role, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, congratulations to Gary. You're happy that he's still with us for another year. Next is uh, Jen McLemore, a two year contract as assistant principal at Mill River Union High School. And I would make a motion that we offer her that contract. Okay, and Liz will second that. Um, is any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the two-year contract for Jen McElmore um, in her current role as assistant principal at the high school, give me a thumbs up. Um, anyone opposed? Please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, congratulations to Jen, continuing her role. And next is a two-year contract for Stan uh, in finance, and I'll just leave it at Stan, and I'll make that motion for a two-year contract for Stan. Liz will second that. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. I laughed because I wasn't going to tackle Stan's last name on air either. <laughs> You're affectionately just all known as Stan to us, Stan. <laughs> any any um, discussion? All those in favor of approving a two-year contract for Stan to continue his role as business manager, give me a thumbs up. Um, anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations, and thank you so much, Stan, for all your work. <laughs> uh, next is a two-year contract for Jody Stewart Ruck as the principal up in Shrewsbury, and I would make that a motion. Okay, is there a second? Adrian, thank you. Um, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the two-year contract for Jody um, up in, in her current role at Shrewsbury, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed? Please say no. Any abstentions? Hearing none, congratulations to Jody. We look forward to her continued work. Next is um, make a motion for a two-year contract for Fred Velestro at Clarendon Elementary. Okay, is there a second? John is going to second that. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving Fred's two-year contract, uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, congratulations to Fred. And keep up the good work. We look forward to him continuing his role. Next is a two-year contract for Tyler Wiedemann as principal at Mill River Union High School, and I'd make that a motion. Thank you. And Liz, thank you for seconding. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the two-year contract for Tyler to continue his role as principal of high school, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed? Please say no. Any abstentions? And congratulations to Tyler. We look forward to him continuing his role. Can I just make an observation? Sure. That we have a lot of people on the same timeline for renewal. Just an observation. We It was so noted in personnel as well. Okay. So Len? Oh, John, go ahead. I think the one that concerns me the most is the principal and assistant principal at Mill River both expiring at the same time. <laughs> yes, indeed. We we are no, I appreciate that, John, and and Liz as well. Um, we are aware of that, and that's at this point all I'm going to say. But it is concerning. Len, do you okay. have anything else for us? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting tired. One more. Um, for the purpose of discussion, uh, uh, offering a two-year contract to David Younce as superintendent. And uh, so I make that a motion. Is there a second? Thank you, Liz. OK, 
Okay, um, discussion, go ahead, Len. Yeah, thank you. Um, as you may or may not be aware, David has a contract through June of 22. And what we are asking at this point is that um, this two-year contract would supersede the five-year contract that David is on at this point, which would expire in June of 22nd. And if I misspeak, David, please jump in. Um, and so this contract would be for 22 and 23, and it would supersede the contract, the five-year contract that David was on, if that makes sense. Okay, does that, does people understand that? And, and just to follow up, and it's just my concern um, that superseding a contract uh, that I know of, we haven't done that in the past. Um, that concerns me a little bit, um, but that's just me. No, that's not just me. It concerns me um, about that. So I, I get concerned that we may be setting a precedent in terms of renegotiating contracts before the old contract has expired. That's my concern. Okay, Andy, you had a question or comment. Oh, there, uh, just to be perfectly clear, Len, could you state the date his new contract will expire? So we have it on the record clearly. Yeah, it would expire in twenty in June of twenty twenty three. Thank you, BJ. You had a hand raised. Uh, yeah, and I also correct me if I'm wrong. This does stagger the superintendent and the assistant superintendent contracts. Am I correct? So that's a good, irregardless of who's in the position, reason to set this. Yes. Okay. Any other comments, questions, discussion? All those in favor of approving a two year contract for our superintendent, Dave Younce, which would supersede his existing five year contract and would end in June 30th of 2023. Right, Len? I've got it right. Okay. Yes. Please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, and I think. Other than the current posting for a bus driver, the current and forever eternal posting of a bus driver, um, the personnel committee meet, will meet again February 3rd at six o'clock. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Len. So policy, PJ. Woo. -hoo. Um, so we had a policy meeting yesterday, uh, and it was great just to kind of get into a grind of things. Uh, we were kind of reviewing, uh, David went through some, the policies beforehand, found ones that require his attention on certain timeframes whether it be monthly, annually, and when, and we kind of helped him pick those dates. Uh, we also kind of decided that we're going to start doing, I got to come up with a review process for reviewing all of them. And that's going to kind of start right after uh, the new school board, after everybody gets elected and all that settles down. So I was really excited about that one. Um, we also have, I'd like to move to adopt E13, which is the prevention of sexual harassment uh, that was warned last week. So. Okay. Is there a second? Thank you, Adrian. Any discussion on that? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving policy E13, prevention of sexual harassment, give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, there you go. 
Uh, and picking a date is where I think we're going to stick with the first Tuesday of the month, uh, probably 530 unless there's extra work to do, which I don't know of yet. <laughs> okay. Thank you, BJ. So we'll move on to negotiations. So Adrian, do you have anything else to share with us? Um, I don't believe um, anything really to, to, to share of any consequence. We've tried mediating with the teachers and now we are, we were not successful in that, but we'll see where we go next. Okay, thank you. Um, John, buildings and grounds. Uh, buildings and grounds did not meet last night um, with it with the school being just coming off of vacation and being all remote. There really wasn't a whole lot to go over. Um, so decided not to have the meeting. Our next meeting would be Tuesday, uh, February 2nd, Groundhog Day, uh, 6 o'clock, uh, assuming that BJ will be done in time with policy. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Maria, community engagement. Hi. Um, we have not had a meeting since the last board meeting, but I do want to remind everybody that our community conversations are starting up this Saturday morning at 930. And then we'll have another on January 25th at 630 p.m., another on February 6th at 930 a.m., and another on February 22nd at 630 p.m. And at each of those, there's going to be a member of the finance committee. So if anyone has any questions about the budget and how that relates to your taxes and how what that pays for at in the schools, then that would be a great time to come and find that out. There will be two or three board members at each one and eight to ten um, community members space for, for that many people just so we can keep it small enough for it to be a, an easier conversation. And also, if you're interested in running for the school board, this next one this week is probably the last one before you have to make the decision to get your paperwork to your town clerk. So if you want have any questions about that, that would be a great one to come to. And um, our next meeting is going to be next week on the 12th at 6.30 p.m. What did we need to discuss that, Tammy? Was, was that conflicting potentially? Uh no, I think that Dave had just mentioned that he didn't think that there were any board meetings when we were trying to figure out on the 13th or next week sometime for a special meeting. So that's all. I don't think. Great. It, I need to get on that agenda in any case. Okay. So, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Maria. And then Liz, finance. Good evening, everyone. I have the following payroll for approval this evening. I have regular payroll dated December 18th. In the amount of five hundred and eighty-two thousand two hundred and seventeen dollars and five cents. I have special payroll dated December eighteenth in the amount of six thousand seven hundred and sixty-six dollars ninety-four cents. And I have regular payroll dated December twenty. I'm sorry, thirty-first December thirty-first in the amount of five hundred and thirty-eight thousand one hundred. $52.54 for a total of $1,127,136.53. I also have the following pay orders from the general fund in the amount of $279,930.50. Also from the general fund, a pay order in the amount of $9,278.17. From the lunch program, I have a pay order in the amount of $26,916.60. And last, from after school program, I have a pay order in the amount of $519.95 for a total of $316,000. $645.28. And I move that we accept the payroll and payable warrants as presented. Thank you, Liz. Is there a second? Thank you, John. Any discussion? I know that Doug, neither Doug nor George are here to give us um, a little update. So 
Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of approving the pay orders and payroll as presented, please give me a thumbs up. Anyone opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I should add that um, our next, I just wrote this down, I didn't know where I wrote it down. Okay, our next finance committee meeting will be March 22nd at 4.30. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Now we move on to transact other legal business. Is there anything that anyone needs to um, address? Okay. Hearing none, George is not with us. Um, we'll go on to agenda building. So now we're gonna talk about, we need to um, approve our warning and ballot. So we need a special meeting next week. Um, does the 13th work for most of us? I know you can't be there, Liz. Does that work for everybody else? Um, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so we'll stick with that. And then if that's okay with you, Liz, um, it's probably the easiest to just keep it to the Wednesday since everybody can kind of make, most everybody can make that. So Dave you'll, and Anne, you'll get out that warning. Um, and then um, we have- Danny, is, that, is that at the normal time, seven o'clock? I would believe so if that works for everybody. Does that yeah, work? Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it at the normal time this way. That makes the most sense. Um, and then for our next um, our meeting, our next regular meeting on the 20th, we need to do some agenda building. So we'll have our central office and principals reports. Um, what else will we need to address at that time besides our usual business? Is there anything else that anyone can think of? Dave, is there anything we're missing? We do have a PD session for the board uh, at six o'clock before that begins. So we'll, we'll get that material prepped for you, but I don't have anything else on my mind in terms of other board topics. Okay. Um, one thing I'd like to just, um, I guess, kind of circle back to transact other legal business briefly um, to just mention is that um, I know, and Dave, maybe you can just connect with Kristen Simonetti. I know that we had had some discussion about her possibly um, presenting at one of our meetings. Um, explain so that the public understands what the role in fellowship is and what work she's trying to do in that regard for our school and our district. Um, I thought that might be an interesting um, presentation for everyone to learn about. Yeah, could I ask Tammy, if it works out, would, would the board be interested in that on the 20th or just want me to check and see and schedule her for some time shortly uh, thereafter? If it works out on the 20th, that would be perfect. Um, okay. Otherwise, just maybe sometime in February if we can manage it. Great, I'll see what I can pull together. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so I don't believe we have a need for an executive session. Am I correct, Dave? That's right. Okay, so um, uh, I guess we can adjourn. Thank you all very much. We adjourn by consensus, right? Okay, thank you. Have a nice night, everybody, and um, Happy New Year to all of you and everyone out there watching.